So Cheyenne Van Bramer is one of the coaches for Youth Alive. And this team is, I'm going to say legendary uh, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And it's legendary uh, for her because it's been 17 years since she started with this program herself uh, personally. So, I mean, this has been an integral part of your life, huh? Yes, it has, definitely, for sure. So how did it all get started for you? Let's, let's go back. Yeah, so um, when I was in elementary school, I went to Conti, and they have the after-school program there. And um, one of the parts of the program was STEP. And I figured I would kind of try it out and see what it was about. And um, through that, I learned that I actually really enjoyed stepping. And because, so now, what is stepping? Let's I mean, let's break yeah. that down a little bit so, because it, you know we're talking about different dances. But yeah. what was specifically uh, stepping? So stepping, in a sense, is kind of like using your body as the instrument instead of dancing to pre-recorded music. So taking, you know, stomping and clapping, snapping, stuff like that, and making beats with your body, putting those together to create steps. Okay. Okay. So there's literally, it's kind of like an acapella situation. I mean, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I kind of think of it as like the acapella of dancing. In a okay. Sense. That's okay. how I would describe it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And when you see those performers, it mm -hmm. is kind of, uh, I mean, it's high adrenaline because it's not only do you have the dancing, but mm -hmm. you have to actually add the music yep. with your own abilities. Right. Um, it's got, that's, that's gotta be tough. There has to be incredible sort of unison among the mm -hmm. dancers to really uh, pull it off. Right. Yeah. It, it takes um, a lot of practice depending on how um, I guess dynamic each step is. Um, it some may require more practice than others. And um, so it kind of takes a lot of practicing to be able to become unified and sound as one rather than many, because that's, that's kind of what you want. You don't want to sound like many. You want to just sound like it's almost as if a singular person is on that stage or, you know, somewhere else making that noise and that rhythm. Mm. And so going back, mm -hmm. you were a student at Conti. Yes community school and yes. uh, you grew up in the west side yes. uh, during that time because you didn't live far from the school. I, I remember where you, where you right. lived. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. It's very <laughs> close. A couple, a couple blocks. So, um, so what, uh, you know, what was that like? Uh, was it kind of a new world for you or were you dancing in other, uh, other forms before that or? Um, that I think, I, I think that's really the first recollection of being in, you know, any dance or step scenario um i don't remember dancing or stepping before that no so formal no formal dancing before right that. exactly i i not, really didn't do anything i would say before that um so that was kind of my introduction to everything that was kind of a part of that type of world do you think that was uh, the case for many of your uh, fellow uh, you know dancers uh, at that point as well um there's a good chance i i'm i'm not entirely sure but um i would say that they're they're possibly is a good chance that they might have been introduced to that because of whether it be through that after school program or, you know, with YA as well. So take me through it because today you're, you're a coach and it's been mm -hmm. 17 years Yeah, and you're a pretty young person. So 17 <laughs> years is a big chunk of your life, a majority right. of it, right? You're only what, 25. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so 17 years, uh, you know, take me through, uh, your further involvement, um, in this mm -hmm. and, and as a student because i'm sure it was you know a lot of confidence that was built self-esteem um when you were doing performances especially because that's mm -hmm. a big deal um, yeah to, to start and, and do that for the first time yeah um i mean i growing up i was very very shy um you know i i wasn't really an outspoken type of person i i wasn't very outgoing like i just kind of more so kept to myself. That was kind of my comfort area. And then, you know, joining Youth Alive, I kind of grew to become a totally different person. And um, so I was able to connect with different people. So I really was able to communicate better with people and, you know, kind of like, like you said, you know, find like a, a different 
uh, perspective within myself of kind of gaining this confidence that I didn't really have before. So you were shy. Uh, yes. yes. And, uh, and you don't seem shy today. Yeah. Um, you know, so I guess, you know, was it, was this part of, yeah, you know, because I mean, I, mean I, I, I don't think you can really overplay how significant, uh, the, perf- the, 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 what you need to do to actually perform Mm -hmm. in front of other people. I mean, Mm -hmm. there are things that are known as the greatest fears out there. (laughs) And and, and most of those fears are often having to do with something like either performing in front of people, Mm -hmm. speaking in front of people, that sort of thing. So, um, so, I mean, it sounds to me like youth alive was a really big part of your growth. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. For sure. I mean, I think starting Youth Alive at such a young age, it kind of, it gave me the opportunity to perform in front of so many people and, you know, different types of crowds and different places. And again, you know, meeting all these people um, directly. And so now kind of looking back on it's, it's kind of funny because I'm so comfortable being on the stage, you know, many people have state stage right and you know very valid fear to have and I mean for me kind of being thrown into that at a young age it kind of was just like oh I don't really I don't really have stage fright I mean I get nerves but it's not really like stage fright you know because I'm so used to performing on stage so it's like I'm comfortable with that that's that's now part of my comfort zone Mm. you know Mm. there's something to be said for just throwing it out there and mm-hmm. through, yeah, because, you know, this fear builds up mm-hmm. the, the more and more that you don't do it. Um, and then, you know, as you get older, uh, those synapses and, and everything start to solidify that like, Absolutely. okay, I've understood and I've really accepted the fact that this is not something that I do. Right. That's what, that's what other people do. Right. But me, I I don't go on stage, but if, if you're able to reach kids at that relatively young age, I mean, you know, I mean, in in your case, what you're about uh, 10, 11, uh, around that uh, age or so, when did it start for you again? What Uh, for YA? Oh, wait, hold on. You were, you were eight. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So that I was a little bit younger than that. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Seven or eight. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So that's that's really great. Mm -hmm. Uh, What an awesome (laughs) time to to start doing that. Yeah. Um, Amazing. So you have eight year olds uh, today. What what are the youngest kids in in youth alive today? Um. Usually it's about kind of the rough age that I was when I first started. So it's usually about seven or eight year olds that kind of start out and, you know, can go up until, you know, even 18, um, depending on when they join. Okay. So now tell you, take me through your journey, uh, Mm -hmm. from (laughs) the seven year old, (laughs) (laughs) eight year old, uh, and then, and then that continued and did it continue through school and through high school as well? Okay. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I loved doing YA so much that I just, I continued to do it. And, um, it took me all the way up until high school. And I, and, um, I did it until I was 18 with that group. And then it kind of helped me get connections into college. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to school? Uh, MCLA. MCLA. Very, very close. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, what'd you study there? I did art as my major and then I did um, arts management as a minor. Okay. And you're still doing that today professionally, right? Yes. Working in the schools yep. um, uh, with the after school programs, yep. um, which is fantastic. Uh, how needed are arts in our schools? And I'm, I'm asking a, uh, I mean, I, load, I mean, it's a loaded question, of course, but mm-hmm. like, um, and it's, and, and you know what answer I'm looking for. I love it. I, I, I feel as though if we could infuse the arts mm-hmm. into the classroom, uh, throughout the day, instead of obsessing so much on MCAS, um, right. we would all be better off. Our right. kids would be better off. Um, that's my opinion, but I think a lot of people would agree with me. Uh, what are your thoughts about arts in school? I, <laughs> I honestly can't say enough how important I think it is that we put more art into the schools. I think that, you know, I mean, a lot of kids, I think would have, they may have an easier time learning certain things through art. 
and, you know, having it, having that exposure throughout their community as well. And I, and I think that, you know, we, we really need more of it. And I mean, especially I think during the pandemic, especially, you know, kind of figuring out what to really rely on to get through all of this. Um, you, you know, you see that art was a huge thing that got people through a lot of the pandemic. So I think it just kind of goes to show you how important really the arts are. And, you know, many people don't really think that the arts are impor an important part of our communities, but I really, really think that it is. Tell me what you see with students as they're uh, engaging mm -hmm. in art um, and, and, how, and how it really, and I, and I think often we, we tend to, um, align everything of, well, how, how is this going to give skills to life? How is this going to uh, make someone more employable? Uh, right. You know, because we're just, we're just programmed that way. You know, right. Nowadays. Absolutely. But, uh, but tell me what you see, um, maybe in that vein, you know, the, the skills that these you know, the kids may learn from the creative process and so forth. But then, you know what? Sometimes there's just like emotional health uh, that, that comes along with this. Absolutely. So you know, what, what are you seeing with students? Um, I think that when it comes to the arts, what, what, uh, with what I've seen is it gives the students a really good opportunity to, I think, connect with the people around them. You know, having something that is fun and educational at the same time to kind of engage them and you know being able to participate in whatever it is and having them like enjoy it you know genuinely enjoy it and um i you know i think that it really will help them to understand themselves more understand you know each other more understand the world more so i think they can kind of get a grasp on how things you know even like outside of school how things may work outside of school and you know, understand everything around them better. There's nothing more beautiful than seeing a child mm -hmm. engaged in the creative process. Absolutely. And whether that's drawing, whether that's doing crafts, you you know, usually it's something with their hands. Absolutely. Not always though. I and, and I, <laughs> I think there's nothing more beautiful than any human being, whether they're right. a six-year-old or a 60-year-old, um, in the same vein, uh, because I've seen uh, seniors in uh, nursing facilities doing those uh, adult uh, coloring mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, books and, and so forth and in very intricate uh, stuff and right and you know just things like that you know not and and that's amazing too mm -hmm. and right. therapeutic right absolutely meditative um, in, in a lot of ways um, God you know there, we got to give all ourselves more of an opportunity to engage in those things. and often it's the arts that can can bring that out absolutely I think um you know we we all kind of understand things a little more whether whether we realize it or not you know we can understand things more because of the arts because we can use the arts to um put messages out there in a more creative way and I think exposing kids to the arts you know, they, they can see that creativity and maybe take it and do something with it and explore their own creativity with it. Yeah. So after high school, mm -hmm. did you continued with, and I'm going to say YA because you keep saying YA and I'm <laughs> yeah. sure informally, you know, that's, what, you know, Youth Alive, Youth mm -hmm. Alive, the team, so forth. However, uh, it, you know, it's described, but, mm -hmm. uh, but YA, yeah. how did that continue after high school for you? Yeah. Um, I mean, when I graduated high school, I was like, well, I, you know, I really want to continue doing something within the arts, like outside of just, you know, actually studying it um, as a major. Um, and so one of the first things I did, ironically, when I first applied for MCLA and then eventually started, um, I was like, okay, I need to figure out what other areas of art that they have you know what what else do they have to offer and I found out that they actually have a step team as well and I you know was talking with someone and they said that the, you know it's a very great step team and so when I had gotten to MCLA I actually connected with the team and um got onto the team 
And so then I was on, I was on that team for all four years of college. Wow. And so for MCLA, Mm -hmm. what did that mean? Was there uh, performances, Mm -hmm. uh, competitions? Is there competition? Okay. So so take me into the world of of step dancing. And is that, is that the terminology that you would use step dancing? Or um, step- I mean, we kind of more so say step. Cause usually when you say, usually when we say like step dancing, people kind of think of it as like Irish dancing. So we right, kind of have to, right. okay. <laughs> we kind of have to like uh, be more specific. So people actually know what type of um, performative art that we're talking about. <laughs> okay. So you, so generally just step. Is, yeah. Is I would say that. Yeah. Okay. So tell me, take me into that world a little bit. Um, if you are in college and there's yeah. competitions, yeah. maybe performances, what does that look like? Yeah. So um, when it came to um, stepping in college, so the team at MCLA is called Nexus. And um, we were one of the um, very few, I would say, performative art clubs on campus. And so we would have um, quite a few performances, you know, each year, um, you know, kind of collabing with a dance company on campus and uh, performing at some of their shows that they would have, because they would have a few shows throughout the year, like in the fall and the spring. Um, And then, you know, we might put on one of our own shows. And then, um, almost every year we had performed at a competition. Um, So traveling to, you know, like Williams College, um, we did one in Dartmouth, I believe it was, um, and being able to kind of meet with teams from other colleges and universities and um, competing with them, which was really, really fun. And is it a nationwide type thing? I mean, this is not a regional. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I assume that uh, step is all over the country oh, and all yeah. over the world, I presume. Maybe. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't know um, about, you know, other countries, but um, yeah, definitely. It's, it, it's definitely nationwide. I mean, uh, step teams are all over the country. Step competitions take place um, all over the country. So it's kind of really like a nationwide um, type of thing. So tell me about uh, some of the, is it performers? We call them performers. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So the, the performers, you know, over the years, I assume Youth Alive uh, in its early days, uh, mm-hmm. it, it evolved. And I'm sure as, as many programs strengthen and, uh, and improve, and mm-hmm. sometimes the uh, uh, performers are able to even go to higher levels, you know, beyond that. And, and, and based on the strength of the program, um, and tell me in your, I mean, 17 years, I mean, yeah. I guess Shirley is probably the only one who's been there uh, <laughs> maybe longer. I don't know. Yeah. Um, as far as that goes, uh, you know, tell me how that has uh, seemed to evolve uh, as far as um, the, the uh, quality of, of what's uh, being uh, produced as far as talent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I think over the years, there's, you know, there's been a lot of people who've kind of been there for a while, like I had, and then, you know, you would start to get more newcomers, um, and, you know, just more and more people kind of joining to do, you know, step and to be a part of the drum team and, um, you know, kind of almost like a, a, the next generation of, um, performers, which is really, really fun. I mean, you know, having, gotten on the team you know at seven or eight and then um you know leading that into my adult years and kind of you know starting off stepping with people that you know I I grew up around and then seeing kind of like newcomers it was really nice to to be a part of the drum aspect of things so Mm -hmm. how how do those work together because you have uh the step which is Mm -hmm. which is the physical you know to use the term dance, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you're, you're stopping yeah. and you're going through that. And then, and then there's the whole drumming aspect yes. uh, and, and do they work together or are they separate performances? Mm-hmm. How does that work? So um, usually it would be separate in terms of a lot of the performances. So kind of, you know, the steppers would do their thing and then, you know, the drummers would do their thing in, in two separate um, performances on like in the same event and everything. And um, there would be times where we'd kind of like come together and 
do one big thing and especially you know during the parades and everything it's kind of definitely um more of a unit I would say because we kind of go off of what the drum team is doing and doing like the dances to that and individuals Mm -hmm. when you work with them um and, and just like you know you as the art teacher uh you know you also have that 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 perspective but now from the step perspective because mm-hmm. you have you've also had the own your own experience yeah uh, <laughs> and, and how it's impacted your life yeah um tell me what you've seen and how and how this program and this um and, and this activity for mm-hmm. lack of a better term um you know how it has uh shaped girls in particular, but Mm -hmm. uh, boys too, um, over the years. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that it's, it's giving these kids a a very safe place to be creative. Um, you know, and it, it, it's more so to be a judgment free zone. And so it's really been a, a nice thing to witness. Um, yeah. And are there kids does it tend to be kids who may not do traditional um I mean, I, i'm saying activities or sports or um you know who who are you seeing that usually joins up with uh, with youth alive um that's a good question um i mean i think that it's really i think anybody i i don't I don't really see many people, I would say, that kind of lean more towards sports kind of joining. I think, you know, it's um, more so kids that are kind of like in other creative spaces um, joining. And then, you know, here and there, you may get somebody who was involved in sports um, join the team. Hmm. Take me through a beginner class. What would that look like? And, and, Maybe it, it, you know, these classes, mm-hmm. um, the, the sessions begin yeah. and, and you have the veterans and you have uh, newbies and, yeah. and so forth. So it's not like you have a group of people who have never done this before and that's, and that's right. you work with them from the beginning. I mean, they're going to have mentors and mentorship right. and there's going to be um, stepping happening that they'll be able to see and they mm-hmm. get this is this is how it's going to happen. But uh, take me through those first steps um, with uh, the the new people who have never done it before. Um, right. You know, how, how do you begin with them? Yeah. So um, usually start off um, kind of doing basic introductions, um, almost like an icebreaker kind of thing. And, and, you know, trying to get everybody to be comfortable in the space that they're in. And um, then we would start off doing very kind of basic things, you know, may take something that we've, you know, done for years and, and doing a step like that and um, teaching them so that they kind of have a basic understanding of what step is and give, and give them something to kind of work up from the ground um, and then see where they can take it from there. Um, and so then, you know, we may introduce, um, I don't want to say complicated steps because again, you know, um, don't want to teach complicated steps for kids, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, but see kind of like how it gets their kind of creative juices, um, flowing and see what they come up with. You know, I, it, it's interesting. I, I think that, um, I've seen, I've seen youth alive, mm-hmm. um, you know, quite a bit. And I think people, you know, from the region, I, I mean, I'm sure all over the country, you know, have seen, especially, you know, parade parades or in, you know, some of those other bigger events where, where they are, it, it is a high energy. Absolutely. It's a very high energy and, you know, it's, it's not like ballet, right? right. <laughs> I'm not saying ballet is not high energy, but like, but, but, the, you know, you can see the heart and soul mm-hmm. and you, and I can imagine to be successful in step, um, it probably is more than just the steps, you know, um, the steps are crucially important, yeah. but, um, but I think, you know, there's, there's a added dimension there probably. Oh yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, for, for me personally, I really found a lot of the inspiration behind stepping when it comes to like how the how the crowds respond you know 
Um, so, you know, kind of hearing people getting excited over seeing these steps, whether it's, you know, people watching the parade or, you know, people at a step competition, you know, kind of hearing them cheering, hearing like how excited they are, it kind of is like, it, it gives you like a little bit of um, extra inspiration to kind of put your all into your performance. Live performance. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that. Yeah. I, I think it's something we missed for <laughs> such a long time, Absolutely. you know, I, and, and I don't care whether it's uh, just speaking and you're on a zoom, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not the same thing, right. As opposed to speaking in front of real people, it's right. not the same thing, uh, doing a performance that's broadcast elsewhere. And you don't have that immediate live feedback from right. actual people who are right there. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's, a, that's something we have missed out on too much of over the last Absolutely. few years. And, uh, and, but there's something to be said for that because that that's part of the performance. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that, you know, we really need the interaction. I mean, you know, you can watch something through a video and, and still have, um, a special experience with it. But I think, you know, it's a completely different experience when you, you know, you see it in, in person. Mm. So self-esteem aspect, mm -hmm. um, you know, tell me, uh, about that. I mean, I'm sure anecdotally over 17 years, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you've seen quite a bit, but, um, but tell me about that, the self-esteem aspect. And then a lot of students have moved on and mm -hmm. I assume gone to college and, mm -hmm. and uh, done great things, uh, you know, thereafter, um, you know, what, what's your, what's your take on, on the self-esteem? Yeah. I mean, I think that it really can help step, step, I think is, is a very helpful tool to with, with self-esteem. Cause again, I was very shy before I had started step and then I joined YA and it kind of just blossomed and, um, you know, over the years, having the more confidence to actually have a conversation on my own with people, um, you know, or having, having the confidence to step by myself in front of a huge crowd of people, which i didn't think I, you know, before that happened, I didn't think I was ever going to do that. I was like, there's no way I can't do that. And, and then I did it and I was like, oh, okay, maybe I can. Um, and, and so I think that with step people can have this like whole new perspective on, on self-esteem. It's like, you know, if, if I can, you know, do this one step, what else can I do? Or if I can, you know, perform in front of this crowd of people, what else can I do apart from that? Um, and, you know, I think that it just, it gives everybody these opportunities to, to really grow as individuals. And, you know, even apart from my experience with, with other people that I know who have been a part of, you know, YA or step in general and kind of having those, those opportunities outside of step and, you know, like with college and everything, it's been really cool. So you're 25. You're Almost, still a yeah. uh, you know, couple months from 25. Yep. <laughs> uh, you're, not, you're not even 25 yet. Um, so tell me about your uh, projected path. And we mm -hmm. all know that uh, paths are meant to be diverted. Right. <laughs> um, and um, I, I'm pretty sure when I was 25, I did not expect I would never have predicted the direction that I would have headed. So, you mm. know, who knows, but, uh, but tell me about uh, your thoughts. It seems like working with uh, young people is, mm -hmm. is a part of, of what uh, seems to uh, drive you. Um, yeah. But uh, your career, what does that look like to you? Yeah. I mean, I, I really think after, after doing step, it really made me, I think, want to reach out to the younger generation more and kind of working with people, whether they're my age, around my age, or even younger than that. And, um, you know, especially within this community, seeing how much art, how much step we can bring into the community. And that's kind of what I hope for, because I, I really think that we, we need more of that. So that's kind of what I'm hoping will, um, will happen, seeing how many, you know, people within the younger generation that can kind of um, get exposed to the arts and to step. And so arts management, mm -hmm. um, you know, at some point, arts inspired you. What yeah. is your medium of choice? Uh, do, are you an artist yourself? I am. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mainly draw with, you know, kind of regular uh, pencils, that type of area. Um, 
even though it's very messy, I really love working with chalk pastel. That's probably my favorite thing, even though I kind of, I mean, I, I usually draw with that after I do like a, you know, basic outline of something with pencil, I go over all of that with chalk pastel, but that's probably my favorite thing to work with. So the chalk pastel, yeah. what exactly is that so you're you're using i mean chalk is yeah. that okay so Pr- pretty much in a, in a sense okay on, yeah. on paper yeah or on a, okay. yep. usually um i don't know if other people work with canvas on other or... mediums with that but i i usually do it on paper i don't know how well it would work on other types of um things but i usually do paper because that's kind of like the easiest that'll go on um and it can be like really thin paper or a little bit more of like a thick type of paper. Um, and in a sense, it's kind of like chalk. It, it's, it, um, you know, they have it in like all different colors, kind of like chalk. It's similar to charcoal, but I think charcoal is a bit thicker than chalk pastel. Chalk pastel kind of, um, it's meant to, to, to be softer and like crumble more when you put it on the paper. So it, tends to get very messy <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay you yeah know? exactly uh, that's that uh, so okay so what are the th- kinds of things that you like to draw um mainly my focus that I really like is kind of doing stuff with flowers or you know the human body um that's kind of been like my area of um inspiration Um, but I've tried out kind of like different, different types of things with that. But I would, I would say that mainly anything to do with, you know, the human body, like, you know, whether it's a, um, a full body part of it or, um, you know, or flowers or both, um, but kind of roughly in those types of themes is what I find really, really interesting. Yeah, that's awesome. Where do you have your work online or? Um, I do. I put okay. well, not all of it, sure but we, I have we'll some. We'll put a link it. to it. <laughs> yeah. Show, in addition to <laughs> Youth Alive. But, um, but yeah. And, and so, you know, how much is, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like nature and nurture because clearly there are some people who are mm-hmm. incredibly talented absolutely at drawing. I am not one of those people. <laughs> I, you know, I, I I could hold my own when I was a younger kid, you know, mm-hmm. at that level and, and uh, you know, sort of paint or not paint, but uh, draw mm-hmm. maybe my favorite, you know, sports athletes, you know, yeah. th- things like that when you're, you know, when you're eight, nine or 10 or something right? in that. But, um, but clearly there are people who have a natural gift Mm -hmm. but then at the same time what is art you know like i mean if you're looking at this subjective thing Mm -hmm. well okay so you can draw a perfect garfield or or what have you i don't know just to to throw that out there that's great um but then you know what what is that art you know what 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 are you trying to create you know is it something original is it what have you and so the idea of a good drawer um you know, what does that even mean? I guess. Right. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that when it comes to art, it, it's really meant to be broad. Yeah. I, I don't think that there has to be kind of like a singular uh, definition of what good art could be, because I could look at something and say, well, that to me, that would be good art, but that doesn't mean that to somebody else, that would be the definition of good art. Um, you know, many things um, in terms of abstract art specifically, you know, abstract art is really meant to be like wild and, and crazy. And so it doesn't mean that to everybody that that's what art, good art is going to be considered, Mm -hmm. but to others, it may be just like, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm sure the development of photographs uh, Mm -hmm. put a lot of painters out of business, right. Over, over, you know, over the years and so forth is so in today, when we're able to do so much digitally and, and and there are some really great graphic designers who Mm -hmm. do a combination and they, and and I, and that's, that's great art too, because then you're infusing the talent of using computer programs with your own skill. Mm -hmm. And so you have this sort of um, combination, this hybrid of physically drawing something and then infusing it with uh, digitally as well. So that that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's really interesting to kind of see all the different aspects of art and see kind of like what people do with it, whether it's with painting, whether it's, 
you know, digital art, kind of like what you were talking about, you know, drawing um, digitally or, or doing, you know, sculpture or other things like that. It's kind of really interesting to see what people actually come up with. Hmm. And, and the ages of the kids that you're working with mm -hmm. uh, after uh, and, and the art program, mm -hmm. the, uh, elementary school kids. Yes. And so what are you seeing uh, in that? It's, you see some talented kids there or what? Um, honestly, I really, I really think that there are some talented kids. You can, they, they have to, I, I think that it's, it's difficult at first to see the, the talent that they could have because they, you know, they really have to warm up to you and you have to warm up to them and you kind of have mm. to build that connection. But um, I, I think that, you know, kind of doing different things within the arts, whether it's, um, you know, like theater, some, sometimes we're doing theater activities with people um, or doing other aspects of the arts, whether that, you know, may be um, drawing or, or building um, things, you know, and kind of seeing what they come up with. And they've really come up with some very interesting things. And, and I, I don't know if they expected that um, or if they knew that they really could do stuff like that. But I really think that they're very creative kids and they just kind of have to get comfortable with the mediums and, you know, get their creative juices going. Yeah. From what I'm understanding, there are, uh, because my kids go to Stearns, mm -hmm. so they actually have reinstated, I don't know, reinstated is the right word, but, uh, after school programming. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's new, uh, yeah. in just even the recent weeks, uh, this is, this is happening. Um, and I would suggest <laughs> that these programs, um, are the programs that really should be happening during the school day in, in a lot of ways, because Absolutely. I just, um, you know, these kinds of things, which make kids be able to use their minds in a different way, uh, to be able to problem solve, be creative, yep. be able to get quiet and, and, and do these kinds of things. Um, in the arts, but not even just necessarily in the arts. I mean, you know, team yeah. team building things mm -hmm. even, um, which I'm sure some of that's happening during the school day. But again, yeah. we're so obsessed with MKS. <laughs> and, right. you know, this, and the teachers have to really stick to curriculum mm -hmm. because they're under pressure to make sure right. the kids are able to do the MCAS. Um, and I think I always thought that one day, we are going to look back on ed reform in Massachusetts, which was way back in 1993, <laughs> and then the and MCAT, they were going to say, man, this was a real disaster of an experiment, but we're still doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're still doing it. And, um, and, and no one has had, I guess, at the state level, had the guts to say, what are we doing here? And, and right. um, again, I'm sure <laughs> testing, there's some value to it. And a lot of educators will say, well, there's, there's some value, but no, it's not perfect. I get that. Yeah. But, um, but for me, I just, I just feel like uh, we, we've, we've come a, a long way and we know a lot more um, and we need to, we need to instill the arts uh, more during the school day. Absolutely. I agree. I mean, I, I think that when, when it comes to testing like that, um, I think that it kind of puts a bit of pressure on, on the kids that I, I don't think that they really need to have that type of pressure on them. Um, and I, I think that putting more of the arts into the school and kind of integrating into it, um, I, I think that they may have a sense of more of enjoyment yeah. with it because I mean, many kids, they don't want to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> They'd rather be doing other yeah. things than going I mean, to you school. Know, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, we've had MCAS for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to hear from some 30 year old saying, by gosh, by golly, I became a millionaire and I did amazing right. things because you know what? They pushed me to do those MCAS tests. Right. Let me tell you, th th you know, that's something that has been said by no one ever, never. So right. that's not going to happen. Absolutely. But they will say, Oh, I had this great after school teacher who taught me Absolutely. art and, and I, I found uh, self esteem or I was in youth alive. Right. And I was able to deal with stage fright that I had when I was six. Then when I was right. seven, I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't afraid at all. And, right. and, and, that, <laughs> and that grew into something more beautiful um, in, in my own process in life that's what you see, yeah. you know? Uh, so I, I think we really need to examine 
education and what Absolutely. we're doing with it um, and what we're doing with it. And I think, uh, and that's why I really love this conversation uh, tonight, because uh, you hit on many different mm -hmm. areas of the stuff that we need to be doing more right. um, in education. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I think that you can, you can integrate art into all different subjects. So, you know, I, I think that kids may enjoy different subjects more with the art potentially um and they may have an easier time understanding what they're actually learning um and being able to enjoy their time more instead of just you know being exposed to it in an after school program and you know if we can do something for them to make them enjoy their time at school more um then I think that it'll be extremely helpful. And I, I, I really think that, um, you know, who, kn who knows what could happen? I mean, it, I think it really could help with their learning and, um, you know, seeing, seeing what happens with them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, teaching them those skills that will right. enable them to face whatever it is they are in life, even, even if it doesn't involve the Pythagorean theorem. Right. You know? I mean, <laughs> like, it's just, you know, because again, I mean, a lot of the information we learn mm -hmm. in schools, um, to be honest with you, are things that we don't necessarily use right. in our right. everyday life. But what we do use is an ability to uh, uh, face an issue and be able to right. rationalize and understand what's right. the way forward and through that and decision making and um, and and that sort of process. Um, if you're going to be a doctor, yes, you have to know where the spleen is. <laughs> right. If you're going to be an engineer, you have to know uh, certainly a, a, a lot about uh, that aspect of things, no doubt. But right. Um, but when it comes down to it. Uh, a lot of what we do during our lives mm -hmm. is being able to face new situations and have a certain approach to it, have certain values to it, right. um, and be able to work with people Absolutely. through a process. And I think that's what <laughs> that's what something like Youth Alive uh, can absolutely do, uh, working together with a team, working together um, through the arts and, and so on. So all that is really helpful. So Cheyenne, did we miss anything uh, here tonight? Um, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think we got everything. <laughs> <laughs> we hit it all. We solved all the problems of the, um, uh, of, of, uh, the world these days, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I commend you for all the work that you're doing. So how often do you practice, uh, for YA? Um, so usually it would be about once a week. That's kind of the, um, the, the rough, estimate that we do kind of every, every week. Um, but then we may practice more often. Um, if we have a practice or not a practice, a, a performance coming up, um, and depending on what type of performance it, it is, um, you know, like with, um, the parades, you know, usually we'll do a couple of practices a week, kind of, you know, at least the month leading up to, um, the parade so that way we can get enough practice in and kind of understand the ground and everything so you have multiple parades that you do which... uh just just the fourth of july just this year okay so yeah. any other you don't do any other parades uh no nope, uh, just okay. just the fourth of july one <laughs> well We'll have, to, we'll have to find, you can go out on the road and, and find some, there, hopefully there'll be more parades this year. Right. Uh, but at the very least, yes, uh, we definitely have to have that 4th of July parade finally back in Pittsfield. So that's good. Absolutely. <laughs> seeing you there. So uh, Cheyenne Van Bramer, wow, what a great pleasure it is getting to know you. Um, say hi to your family. Uh, you come from a wonderful, wonderful family um, in, in our fine city of Pittsfield. So um, I wish you the very best. Thank you. All right.